He gave a, a lot of information, huh? All right, so we're going to go through a few scriptures showing that their customs in Ghana are based, right, on the customs that we had in Israel, right? Because, you know, we passed on customs by mouth. So because we, cast, we, 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 uh, we, we uh, taught one generation, another generation, it changes a little bit. But you can find the foundations of what they do in the scriptures. So I pull the first scripture, is uh, Genesis 24, and I want to start with verse 26, right? So what's happening in Genesis 24? Isaac sends his servant, right? No, a um, Abraham, I'm sorry, sends his servant to find a wife for Isaac, right? Isaac finds Rebekah at the well, right? And he notices out of what he was told that she fit the description of a good woman the woman that he was sent to find for his master Abraham. So when he found the woman and, she, and he saw that she fit the description, he started to praise the Most High. So we'll start with Genesis 24 and verse 26. Read that. Genesis chapter 24, verse 26. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Most High. Right. And he said, Bless be Yahweh, the power of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master, of his mercy and his truth. Go ahead. I being in the way of the Most High led me to the house of my master's brethren. Go ahead. And the damsel ran and told them of her mother's house being seen. So the first thing he did was praise the Most High, bless him that he found what he was looking for. Right? He found the wife for Abraham's son Isaac, which was a big deal. This is why what, what, what Matthias is talking to us about in Ghana, this is something the whole village gets involved in. This was not a small thing. It wasn't a private thing. It wasn't that, you know, it was just two people. We don't know what they do. Esau, they elope. We don't elope, right? That's nonsense. We don't get married over Facebook either, right? The family is involved in our marriages, right? The family's involved because we're, we are, we are mastered a weighty matter, right? Hallelujah. Well, I didn't plan to speak about marriage, and I, I, I tend to always ha end up speaking about it. But uh, we'll, we'll, I'll talk a little bit about marriage. Don't but I had, <laughs> right? But I'll, I'll, I'll attempt to connect what he was talking about to the scriptures, showing the foundations of what these nations do and their, civil their civilizations that exist today are based on biblical. Uh, premise, biblical foundation. So I said to go to this scripture, 7. Uh, Verse 25. Uh -huh. Marry thy daughter. Do what? Marry thy daughter. Go ahead. And so shalt thou have performed a weighty matter. Uh huh. But give her to a man of understanding. But give her to a man of understanding. Marry thy daughters, because when you do that, you have taken care of a weighty matter. What is a weighty matter? Something of great importance. This is why there was no secret marriage. This is why there was no, um, it's my private life marriage. It was a weighty matter for who? Who was it a weighty matter for? For the father and who else? Who else? The father and who else? The mother? Who else? The bride? Who else? Who, who said it here? The whole family. Auntie, Kazo, your brother, your sister. How, wait, wait, what happens when you marry? Their family becomes your what? What is, what is that called? We call them in-laws, right? In-in-laws. These are your in-laws. This is your brother-in-law, sister-in-law, auntie-in-law. They are your in-laws. In what law? In the law of the Most High God. That's where that comes from. This is your family according to the laws of Yah. Not because of the law of the land. Because people, you know, they get marriage certificates. Nobody don't know nothing. But according to the law, you're not just marrying that man. You're marrying into his family. You are now become a part of his family. That means you left your family. This is for my daughters, sisters, mothers in the room. You leave your family and you join your husband's family. Does everybody understand that? 
That's why she said there was no inheritance left for them, Leah and Rachel, because they no longer belong to Laban. Inherited or something they're supposed to gain, they, their gain has already been done in the, in the marriage process. Um, read that again. Okay, Sarah chapter 7, verse 25. Go ahead. Marry thy daughter, and so shall thou have performed a waiting matter. Go ahead. But give her to a man of understanding. Read on. Hast thou a wife after right. thy mind? Come on. Forsake her not. Right, so give your daughter to a man of understanding. Then the next verse says, Hast thou a wife after thy own mind? So what? You, you and your wife have to be like-minded. There's none of that men from Mars, women from Venus. That's Esau's nonsense. That doesn't exist in our, in our kingdom, right? That's his stuff. We, don't, we can't intertwine what we learn in this kingdom with God's kingdom, right? I spoke, it, I spoke of it earlier. I'll say it again. Kingdom, what does it mean? Who remembers earlier? King's dominion, right? That means who has dominion over you? The king. Who's the king? Who's the king? Christ is the king. Christ came to do the work of his what? The works of his father were written down and they're called what? We know what we're doing then, right? We know what we're doing. If it's not according to that, it's according to nothing, right? It's all fake, right? You know about fake Hollywood? It's all Hollywood. If it ain't according to that, it's according to Hollywood. Go ahead, read on. Forsake her not, but give not thyself over to a light woman. Right, but don't give yourself over to a light woman. So this is the instructions of marriage of what? Of courtship. These are courtship instructions. People say, well, I don't know how to court. It's right there in the Bible. How to court is in the Bible. If a woman ain't about nothing, leave her alone. Right? When she grows mentally and she's about something, then she's ready to marry. We got to know our daughters. I know mine. Right? I tell them all the time, listen, you got to be about something. You got to grow. You got to get knowledge. You got to get wisdom. You got to get understanding. Why? Because if you don't, a righteous man ain't going to want to be with you. What you who wanna, the person that's going to want to be with you is a, you know, a guy that's just looking at you outside. Right? right? Looking at you for a good time. Right? But the courtship process is right in the Bible. Read verse 27. Honor thy father uh -huh. with thy whole heart. With thy what? With thy whole heart. So then when you're thinking about a spouse, I'm talking to my daughters now, talking to the women in the room, when you're thinking about a spouse, honor thy father with thy own heart. Don't even look at somebody that your father would not approve of. Don't even think about it. Because you're honoring your father with your whole heart, not some of your heart. Say, no, I, I honor my dad when it comes to my, uh, my schoolwork. I honor my father when it comes to the dress I got on. But when it comes to my man, that's my business. Don't tell me who to be with. Mm. I'm going to choose my own man. Right? Uh-uh. No, you're not. Not according to this. Right? Not if the kingdom is in you. If the kingdom is in you, you got to do it this way. Right? Let's read. And forget not the sorrows of thy mother. And don't forget that your mother toiled with you. Because, you know, fathers, you know, we, we, we help raise our children. You know, some of us are put in situations where we have to be the mother and the father. But, you know, the mother is the one that is going to be up with you at night when your ear hurt. And, you, and this hurt and that hurt. And they can't get no sleep. And the mother is the one where their body looked like this before you came. And then it kind of looks like, you know, a, a fraction of what it was. And they suffer those things. Mom went through that. So when you remember your mother's sorrows in, your, in, in birthing you and raising you, you think about that when you're about to decide who you're going to be with. That's your father and your mother. Don't tell them that they got nothing to do with that. That's incorrect. Right? That's how we came up in this kingdom. We didn't tell our father. And our mother, man, man, we already married 10 times before our mother knew. Before my father knew anything was going on. I probably married ten times. Read that. Verse 28. Go ahead. Remember that thou wast begotten of them. Remember you came from them. Go ahead. And how canst thou recompense them the things that they have done? Can you ever pay them back? Can you ever pay them back? 
I'll show you how you can. You could pay them back by honoring them in marriage and, by, and being fathers and mothers and bring forth grandchildren to them, right? That they're being raised in a house so that, they, that your parents could be proud of. That they could say, see my daughter? Look how he's married to, this, to this, this good man. And they got this and they got this going on and they're oh, they so happy together. You ever see a, a parent that's so happy that their child is happy? Right? So happy that their son is doing good, that there's no drama. They don't want you to call their phone and say, man, I don't know. I ain't seen my husband in three weeks. He ain't called me or nothing. What's going on over there? I don't know. You got all this drama. I think I might be coming back home. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. We got to find him. <laughs> we got to find him. But that's why those laws were the way in Ghana, like, like um, Adopted was bringing up, all they was trying to ensure is that the marriage was sure. They were trying to ensure the marriage. So all those antics, everything, go and get this person, ask them who you're going to marry, who you're going to marry. All those actions was for one purpose, to put insurance in this marriage. So that later on, we don't want to hear nothing that's out of miss. Go back to Genesis, Baba Kusha. Genesis 24. Like I said, I, I, keep an eye on the time for me, because I didn't plan to talk about marriage. Matthew asked me to come up and say, oh, you got the scripture, you talk about marriage, but I talk about marriage, All right? But I did have a topic for today, so I'm going to give myself five, three more minutes in this topic, and then I'll get to the topic that I have for you today. Let's, um, you back in Genesis? Okay, 25, 26, you're down to 20, 28. Genesis chapter 20, 24, verse 28. Right. And the damsel ran and told them of her mother's house these things. So the damsel ran home to tell our parents because the man, the servant, told her, I came here looking for a wife for my master's son. She didn't keep it on a DL. She ran home to tell her parents and her family, listen to what this man just told me. I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to be a he found me to be a suitable wife for his master's son. Read. And Rebecca had a brother. Right. And his name was Laban. Mm -hmm. And Laban ran out unto the man, uh -huh. unto the well. Go ahead. And it came to pass, when he, was, when when he, he saw, saw the earring, right? the bracelets upon his sister's hand, uh -huh. and when he heard the words of Rebecca, his sister, mm -hmm. saying, Thus spake the man unto me, that he came unto the man, and behold, he stood by the camels at the well, mm -hmm. and he said, Come in, thou blessed of the Most High. Mm -hmm. Wherefore standest thou without? For I have prepared the house and room for a camel. Stop right there. So the brother ran out. After she told him the story, he ran out to go meet this man. Right? Let me go meet this man. But when he came out there, what did he say? What did they say he saw? In verse 30, he saw what? The earrings, the bracelets upon her hand, right? So what was significant about the earring and the bracelets? What did he see? Huh? He said a lot, said pra. He saw the shakoyim, right? He saw the shekels was prepared for this wife. He saw that they were prepared for this union. He came and he said, oh, they're not playing. They for real. He came and he saw the bracelets and she got earrings. He's like, look. They came and gave me all of this, right? So now he knows, oh, this ain't just talk. This is, he said, come on in the house. I got a room for you. I got privilege for your, for your camels. Come on in, bro. I thought somebody, I thought somebody was playing a game. Because we could talk a lot of talk. And that's where the diary comes into play because you can say what you want to say. You know, Jacob is a smooth talker. And he back it up. Now they're talking up. But now you got to back it up. You have to come with what the law requires of you. That's how they know you serious. Otherwise, you're just playing, man. Right? You're just talking. You know what I mean? You're wondering and trying to coerce somebody into something that they, they don't know what they're getting into. But now, that is what? Proof. One word. If you put it down to one word, proof was in his hand. Proof was in her hands that this was going to be a real marriage. Go
Hey you. What you doing? You haven't subscribed yet? Man, hit that subscribe button right now. Like, comment, and share. Trusting, me not trust anything. Me free for trust the steers, cause them are raised up to something. And me not trust the atoms, them to lie, they make up everything. Me know one day we are go fly, and that is so uplifting. Go okay. ahead. And the man, verse 32, uh -huh. came unto the house. Uh -huh. And he ungirded his camels, uh -huh. and gave straw and provender for the camels, uh -huh. and water to wash his feet, uh -huh. and the men's feet that were with him. And there. Jump down to, thir to 36. So he's telling him the story. She's, he has to tell the whole story to the family. He couldn't come with, I like her. She cute. She pretty. That wasn't going to, that wasn't going to make it. He had to come with the whole story. My master went, sent me. This is what happened. My, uh, his, her, the mother passed away. He had to give the whole truth and lay down the whole story so they could understand what? They're about to enter into a covenant, right? It's different than a contract. You know, a lot of people say a covenant is a contract. It, they're similar, but not the same. Because a contract is written to protect you from the wrongdoing. A covenant is written, right, in love. A covenant is written in a bond, in a soul, in a bond. Right? Contract not really bond. Paul, you got a contract, you break the contract, you proceed. That's just to cover both parties in the contract. But a covenant now, like what the father had with Abraham, right? That was, that's in stone. That's going to be there forever. We broke the covenant. But the covenant has to be mended because a covenant is not temporary. A covenant is forever. Everybody understand that? Let's read. Verse 36. Uh-huh. And Sarah, my master's wife, bear a son to my master when she saw when she was old and unto him hath he given all that he had right so he's just he's going into the history of of a mother let's skip down for a process of time let's go down let's go down go down right um go down she, he went over the story she let down the picture he went over to everything that happened between uh the interaction between him and rebecca all right all right give me that 58 that's good and they, they called, Matter of fact, start with 57. That's important. 57 is important. And they said, we will call the damsel. We will call Rebecca. Go ahead. And inquire at her mouth. We need to hear how she feels about this. So now, we're not saying that we're going to just take a... You know, we're not like what? It was like the Indian people. We're not going to just take a man and say, ha, right? Go with that man. There has to be some inquiring at her mouth. Do you want to go with this man? Right? We're not like the other nations. They just, they made a marriage and that's it. You don't care what you got to say. It's not like that, right? Not for the woman, right? The man is under orders, but the woman has a choice because the woman is the one that's being gotten. A man is not being gotten. A woman is the possession. Everybody understand that? The woman is the possession. The man is not the possession. The man is the possession of the most high. The woman is the possession of that man. So that woman now, she has to say, yay, I will go. Just like the doctor was bringing up, they would ask the woman what? What happens if you can't marry this man? She has to say what? Who is paying attention? I'm going to run away. Meaning that she is 100% she is sure she wants to be with this man. Our daughters have to be 100% sure that they want to be linked to this man. Because they can't be, well, I only did it because you wanted me to do it, right? Because sometimes a child will say, I did it because my parents wanted me to do it, right? It's kind of why I went to college, right? Because I didn't want to do it, right? My parents wanted me to do it. So you do these things in life to please someone, but a marriage can't be that. It has to be your choice for the purposes that you know, right? are given to you as a, a daughter of Zion, right? The role you're supposed to play with a husband. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And they called Rebecca and uh -huh. said to her, Wilt thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they sent away Rebecca. What'd she say? What, what'd she say? 
And she said, I will go. I will what? I will go. And she said, I will go. And from that point on, she is sold to be the wife to Isaac, right? From that point on, she is, she is sold. She's in what you call espousal or betrothal. She is no longer a single woman because she made a covenant and she said, I will go, right? Jump down to the end of the matter. And Isaac took her. Verse, uh, right. right there. Verse 67. Yep. And Isaac brought her unto his mother Sarah's tent. Right. And took Rebecca. Right. And she became his wife. And she, read. And he loved her. Mm -hmm. And Isaac was comforted after his now, mother's death. Now the reason why I went to those verses before, you see a lot of times, I know you've all heard this, people run to this verse and say, see, they laid together and they married. Because sex is marriage. Isn't that what they taught you? But is that, exact, is that exactly true? According to everything you read. Is sex marriage? Mm. Raise your head if you think sex is marriage. Nobody raise their head? Sex alone. Sex alone. Does sex make you married? Laying with each other make you married. I hear consummation, I hear it makes it official, right? You see, for a long time, we looked at these scriptures and we said, we went right to 67 and said, I don't need no pastor or preacher, I don't need nobody else, I don't need no certificate, I don't need nothing. He took it in the, read that verse again. And Isaac brought her unto his mother Sarah's house. Go ahead, Ten. Mm -hmm. And took Rebecca. Go ahead. And she became his wife. Go ahead. And he loved her. Right. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Right. And that was the consummation of the marriage. That is correct. That's where it all, it all becomes solid. But she was married to him already when she made that covenant way up in the verses. Right. She was already his wife. Right. So your, your marriages, without that covenant, right, if you want it to be blessed in the sight of the Most High, we can't just jump to the 67th verse. Right? You have to do all of that. Right. And it's our responsibility as elders. Right, I'm not really an elder yet. I'm not rushing it. Right? I'm not rushing it. It's a few grades, right? I'm not an elder yet. So I'm going to put my responsibilities on Ash. I'm going to put responsibility on, on, on uh, Ben and, and all the other elders that are here to ensure that our marriages are correct. Right? If you don't have a father in this truth, a mother in this truth, go to your elders. Do not make the decision on your own, and then later on, you want counsel from Yakana, or from myself, or from someone to clean up the mess you caused. Right? Because sometimes we can help, and sometimes we can't. Because it was doomed before the beginning. And you didn't know it because, why? You jumped the broom. Right. You put the as, as our uh, elder priest say, you put the cart in front of the horse. You wasn't prepared to make that decision. And now you want someone to clean it up. So. All right. So all day, the, the teachers, the elders were giving us information to make our lives better. We have these summits. We come together. You take something away. Right. Some answers to the questions that you may have had, you know, throughout the years, throughout the days. Hopefully we answered some of your questions. Hopefully this class was helpful. You got six right? minutes, Chief. Huh? I got, you got what? six more minutes. I got six more minutes? Let's get my presentation and go back. Come out of here. So that's, that's going to be my ending on marriage. Marriage is the first. Let's give most of our hand. Hallelujah. your host of WLOZ, Bunya Howada, Bunya Sharam. I came over there at WLOZ and I came with another smash hit. What would you gain if you lose your soul? What does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? I'd rather live my life like Job, Lord, refine me in the furnace till I'm pure like gold from out the concrete, grew a rose. What does it 
profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul I'd rather live my life like Job, Lord, refine me in the furnace Till I'm pure like gold, the truth was written, it was never sold